Coming up on Unpeeled, Jimmy Fallon is in some hot water. One singer shined at last night's Video Music Awards. Hop in your automobile for a jam-packed fall in Syracuse. And we're recapping the best collections from New York Fashion Week. All that and more on Peel starts right now. Welcome to the season premiere of Unpeeled. I'm Lily Evans. And I'm Anastasia Frazier. Now for an update on the Danny Masterson case. That 70s show co-stars Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis are publicly defending actor Danny Masterson. The couple posted an apology video after receiving backlash from their leaked court letters. Masterson has been found guilty of two rape charges and has been sentenced 30 years to life in prison. He was also found guilty of drugging his victims in his home between 2001 and 2003. Prosecutors argued that the Church of Scientology assisted his cover-up, but the organization denied those allegations. Masterson did not take the stand and remained silent, silent throughout the hearing. In other news, country singer Zach Bryan was arrested for obstruction of a police officer after a traffic stop last week in Oklahoma. The news circulated on social media after Bryan's mugshot was released. The singer's bodyguard was reportedly pulled over for speeding. Brian pulled up next to the SUV and began arguing with the officer. After the incident, Brian released a statement on social media and said, quote, Emotions got the best of me, and I was out of line in the things I said. He was booked and released within 24 hours. The Tonight Show star Jimmy Fallon is under fire for his alleged toxic workplace. Rolling Stone reports more than a dozen former employees came, claim that Fallon has been fostering a toxic environment for years, stemming from his outbursts and erratic behavior. After the news broke, Fallon apologized in a meeting with his staff, saying, quote, I feel so bad I can't even tell you. If I ever mistreated anybody or made you feel bad, that was not my goal. While Fallon has not made a public address, NBC Universal made a statement on Friday saying Fallon and the show are not under investigation as the allegations are years old. Now, Lily, this isn't the first time a comedy show host has been accused of creating a toxic work environment, and I feel like ever since Ellen DeGeneres' claims came out a few years ago, the employees are really not taking any kind of mistreatment and producers are finally starting to speak up about it. Yeah, absolutely. Similarly, Lizzo, another very famous person in the entertainment industry, also had people, you know, firing back at her saying, we're not being treated correctly. And honestly, it's good to see these employees kind of standing up to their employ employers, no matter how powerful they may be. I completely agree with you. And I feel like these are just a few examples of the larger issue in the entertainment industry right now. We're seeing from the SAG and WGA strikes that people People are standing up for their needs and that's really important right now. Yeah, it definitely can get a little bit hairy though. I know I saw a report from page six that some of these people are saying, are defending Jimmy Fallon and saying, no, like he makes us feel like family. We love going to work every day. So it's definitely very interesting to see how different people are perceiving these allegations. A few producers and even his guest, Jerry Seinfeld has spoke up and talked about Fallon and a positive experience we, he had with him and just defending him about the situation overall. Yeah, well, very interesting stuff. But in other news, Rihanna's new Puma Avanti sneaker is coming out this Friday. Rihanna created this soccer-inspired collection to honor her love for the sport. She said, quote, football is a universal language that brings people together from all over the world. She originally teamed up with Puma in 2015, but took time off for other projects. Diving into the business world is not uncommon for the musician. As her Fenty Beauty brand has received global recognition, the sneaker is set to be available for all ages, ensuring that, quote, the whole family can be part of this. The shoe will be available for all on Puma.com. I am so excited to see this shoe, and I would honestly even buy it just because of Rihanna's oh, yeah. design and, 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 and creating it. And it's really amazing to see that after the Super Bowl, she's still staying committed to her love for football and doing something completely different from music, now into fashion. I'm excited to see what people think about the shoe. Absolutely, she really does it all. I mean, talk, speaking of powerful celebrities that are, you know, take one thing and then go into the business world, Kim Kardashian, I, she's my girl. I love her so much. She started off with a super successful makeup brand and then ventured into the world of clothing with Skims and it's been super, super successful. So I'm sure the same outcome will be for Rihanna. Oh, definitely. And I'm really excited to see that. Also, Rihanna said, 
taking some time off as a mom mm -hmm. has led her to have new creativity ideas and to put into this shoe. So I think that's gonna, we're, we're gonna all see that. Absolutely, it's gonna be super, super fun. And she actually partnered with Puma before, back in 2015, like we said, mm -hmm. and she worked with them for about three years and she gave them over a billion dollars in sales, which is actually crazy to me. That is a huge number. And I'm sure with all the Super Bowl buzz and everything that that will happen again. Oh, definitely. All right, well, Captain America is officially off the market. I that makes me so sad. Chris Evans <laughs> married 26-year-old Portuguese actress Alba Baptista in Cape Cod over the weekend. Evans, who recently turned 42, is 16 years older than his new wife. News first broke in November of 2022 that the pair had been dating for over a year. The wedding was Hollywood heavy with some of Evans' favorite Marvel co-stars in appearance, as well as actors Emily Blunt and John Krasinski. The couple has stayed pretty private since they began dating, and very few details have come out about the wedding so far, but I am so excited to get even more details on this. Like most people, I love Chris Evans, and it's awesome to see that his co-stars from the Avengers like Robert Downey Jr., Chris Hemsworth, and Jeremy Renner were all in attendance. Yeah, it's definitely see that they foster that great relationship both on screen and off. And I, I mean, like you said, Chris Evans just will always have a piece of my heart. We share a last name. I mean, he's just one of my favorite people ever. And yes, I know people are talking about this age gap between the two of them, but age is just a number to me. And if he's happy, that's all I care about because he really does deserve it. Exactly. And he's done so much in his professional career and now he's happy in his personal life too. We're, we're excited for you, Chris. Very, very <laughs> excited. <laughs> And when we return, music reporter Alana Epstein is here to give us the rundown on last night's VMAs. And our industry reporter Riley Underwood joins us in studio with new updates on this summer's historic strikes. You don't want to miss it. We'll be back in two minutes. other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's smoky. It looks as if Smoky is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good stir. Next, another drink. Next and finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smoky, catch. Oh, my bad, Smoky. Only you can prevent wildfires. While some aspects of Hollywood are surely on hold, music is not one of them. Last night, the 40th annual Video Music Awards took place, and it was a wild night. From historic moments, incredible songs, renditions, and backstage gossip, there's definitely a lot to be discussed here. And here sitting down with us is our music reporter, Alana Epstein. Alana, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited. We got to break this down. I know we watched a little bit of the VMAs together last night. We have our own thoughts about our favorite performances, but what can you tell our viewers about the performances? Well, yeah, there were so many amazing performers, Anastasia. So I'm going to try and break it down really quickly here. So opening up the show, we had Anneli Chapa and Nelly. They performed Hot in Here, which is actually trending on TikTok right now. So that was an amazing way to get the 
audience ready for an amazing night of music. Olivia Rodrigo performed shortly after she did two of her songs, Vampire and Get Him Back, which are both off of her new album, which came out last week. And you know, there were so many other performances. Sabrina Carpenter, Anita, Demi Lovato, who performed renditions of Sorry Not Sorry and Cool for the Summer. The rock versions are coming out later this month. Nicki Minaj performed Megan and Cardi, and there was also a 50 Years of Hip Hop tribute. So, so many amazing performances. I could go on and on and on. And the Video Vanguard Award is a huge honor each year. Can you tell us a little bit about who won it this year? Yes, so it's a huge honor to win that award, especially in the world of music and pop culture. So last night, Shakira took that award home. Amazing. Honestly, I can't think of anyone better to get that award this year. She performed right before she took the award home. She did a huge, amazing performance. She did Wherever, Whenever, Hips Don't Lie, and a bunch of her other amazing hit songs. And that performance actually has over 5 million views right now on YouTube. And, you know, she also, in her speech, thanked her adorable kids who were actually in the audience last night. So Aww. take a look. I want to thank my kids, Milan and Sasha, who are here. Thank you so much for cheering me up and for making me feel that mama can do it all. <laughs> and especially, I want. Wow, that's really incredible. And Alana, we cannot leave this segment without talking about one of the most incredible artists who had the most fun at the VMAs last night. What can you tell us about Taylor Swift's wins? Taylor Swift is the moment, and she definitely was the moment last night. She took home nine awards. Nine is absolutely insane, and some of the biggest awards of the night all went to her. Video of the Year, Song of the Year for Antihero, and Best Pop. And, you know, she made history. She tied for the most wins and one night, and she now is the second highest artist to have the most VMA wins overall. So, you know, not only did she win those amazing awards, she also had such a good time. She was letting loose, having fun. She had a couple of drinks, and she just was having so much fun with Ice Spice and with so many Many other people in the crowd singing along. There are so many videos of her on TikTok. The Swifties were loving it and they also were loving her outfit. She had a very similar necklace to the one in the Reputation album cover. So possibly Reputation TV next, we don't know, but it was an amazing night overall for so many amazing artists. Thank you, Alana. Oh, gotta love some Taylor Swift. Unpeeled may have been off your screens this summer, but a lot has been going down behind the scenes. Our industry reporter Riley Underwood is live in studio to tell us what's been going down in Hollywood. Yeah, that's right. You guys may have been seeing a lot of reruns on your screen, and why is that? That's because both the writers and actors are on strike. The Writers Guild of America has been on strike since May 2nd, which represents over 11,000 screenwriters. Shortly after, the Screen Actors Guild followed and has been on strike since mid-July, and they represent over 160,000 on-air talent. The last time both the writers and actors went on strike simultaneously, Ronald Reagan was president. And no, not the President of the United States, but the President of the Actors Guild. 1960 was the year anything this magnitude happened last. And both these associations are in conflict, conflict with the Alliance of Motion Picture and the Television Producers, which represents the major film and television studios in Hollywood. The initial writer's strike was caused by a lack of a new contract with the Producer Alliance, as well as the compensation issues for writers dealing with streaming and that fear that studios will start to use artificial intelligence in the writing process. The actor strike was caused by the lack of a contract agreement, complications with streaming, and the use of artificial intelligence. The Actors Guild alleged that the television producers attempted to include a proposal that allowed studios indefinite rights to extras likenesses, which would allow AI to replicate them on screen. Warner Brothers announced that it was expecting the strike to impact its 2023 earnings by $500 million. Almost all the shows on TV have been affected, and with new fall seasons scheduled to come out soon, fans and studios are eager to get a deal done. And you can see all these television studios affected, and networks all around are kind of panicking to get back to action. So they're now filling their primetime schedules with reality and competition shows mostly. And even in another industry is now being hit by the strike, video games. At the beginning of the month, the Actors Guild clarified that the strike applies to voiceover actors as well as stunt performers. So all the industries are being involved. Guys? Hey, thanks, Riley. We're falling in love with fall in Syracuse this year. We'll have all the details on this fall's festivities. We'll be right back on Peelers.
Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you. Your favorite brother, your other brother, yes. you, your football buddy, your football buddy, you, your plumber, breathe right into your foot, your plumber's masseuse, yes. you, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. It was a huge week for sports, football is back, an American teenager won the U.S. Open, and a huge upset for a UFC fighter. Our sports reporter Lillian Northrup is here to update us on everything sports. Lillian. Thanks, Anastasia. Let's kick it off, no pun intended, with a look at week one of NFL football. Football is back, and I'm loving it. Tom Brady's fall is looking a little different this year. No wife and no NFL. Here's him at a tennis match last week. Nice. But as for Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they snagged a new quarterback, Baker Mayfield. A solid first week for their offense against the Minnesota Vikings. Unexpected, but Mayfield and the Bucs won 20-17. Wrapping up NFL with our most recent Monday Night Football, fans were excited for the debut of Aaron Rodgers as the new Jets quarterback, but that didn't last too long. First drive down and Rodgers goes down with a torn Achilles. That is a season ending injury for Rodgers and a sad moment for Jets fans. The Bills quarterback Josh Allen didn't get injured but certainly didn't play his best game either. Throwing three picks to the same Jets safety Jordan Whitehead and a fumble picked up by the Jets. An off the post field goal though sends the game to overtime. Xavier Gibson from the Jets with a punt return touchdown. What a story for any hard knocks fans out there. Gibson and bringing it home for the Jets. Over to the court, Coco Goff won her first major title on Saturday at the U.S. Open. Goff is the youngest American to win a U.S. Open at just 19 years old since Serena Williams did in 1999. She fell to the ground in her winning moment before getting up crying to shake her opponent's hand. Since her major win, her fame has blown up and fans are hoping Goff is bringing back the tennis name for America in this is just the start. Our last look at sports from the week, a massive upset in Australia. Sean Strickland absolutely owned Azrael Adesanya to become the new UFC middleweight champion. Strickland won on a plus 500 chance of winning, which if you don't know in the betting world, that's an insane underdog. So insane that it was actually the largest title fight upset in UFC middleweight history. Strickland says, quote, I gave up so many brain cells to the MMA gods every day. This is the first time I'm lost for words. Now that's a big week in sports. Lily, what do you have for us? Oh, Lillian, thank you so much. Well, you don't have to travel far to check boxes off your fall bucket list because Syracuse has plenty of activities to keep you busy all September and October. Here to share her top ideas for fall fun in the area is Syracuse events reporter Maura Vaughn. Maura, I can't wait to talk about this with you. I am so excited to be here <laughs> talking about fall today. And Lily, I don't know about you, but when I think of fall, I'm thinking apple picking, pumpkin patches, and rewatching Go More Girls for like the 100th time. Ugh. And although at this event you can't rewatch Go More Girls, an event I think you should be on the lookout for is the Abbott Farms Fall Festival. But I will come right back to that because there's something else I want to talk about, which is the Syracuse Foodie Truck food event that's oh. happening from September uh, September 23rd from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. And I've put together a little bit of a menu for all and peelers of all my favorite lunch and dinner options that I think everyone should take a look at and that's what you should order too on the screen. And I am just so excited to be there. I think there's gonna be so many great vendors there, over 45. So it's a great thing to look at at the state ground fair. Oh, 100%. I think Unpeeled is in for a bit of a field trip to Abbott Farms. Oh. 
Absolutely. If, if that's what I'm saying. So could you tell me a little bit more about that? Where is it? What's it about? Give yes. me the rundown. I am so glad we're talking about this <laughs> event because we definitely need to do a field trip. It is started on Labor Day weekend. It goes all the way to Halloween. So we have plenty of time to go there. And there are so many events for all families, for kids, for adults. I mean, I'm talking quintessential fall activities. We got the hay rides, the pumpkin patch, the apple picking, every game. And there's also stuff for the adults to do. You can get drinks in the apple orchard. So it's really fun for all the families. And I think it'd be super fun to go to. Oh, more you're really speaking my language. I'm really craving some good apple cider right about now hearing you talk about this, some donuts, the weather's cooling off. It all just is really, I texted my mom today and I was like, it feels like fall. It's amazing, it's amazing. So speaking of apple cider, what's your favorite? What's your Syracuse top choice of I apple mean, cider? I weirdly could talk about apple cider for <laughs> so long. I have the strangest <laughs> obsession, I love it. I love that. I have tried so many Syracuse apple ciders and I think my favorite, it's kind of a hidden gem. It's called Owen Orchards. Okay. It's a family run farm and I went to the CMY regional market with College Eats and Peel last semester and I tried out, it was seriously the best. I mean, you could see the look on my face. I say, that's real apple cider, man. That's literally <laughs> word for word what I said. That's a real apple so cider. So I think we gotta check it out there, absolutely. All right, you and me, girl, we're going together. Absolutely. Well, New York Fashion Week may be wrapping up, but don't worry, our lifestyle reporter, Ryan Kong Yu, is here with a dazzling report. We'll be back in two minutes on Peelers, and you won't wanna miss it. Anxiety. But with the help of this latest innovation from Be Normal, he can be normal, just like everyone else. With the swipe of a finger, you can project happiness, confidence, machismo. Why settle for being real when you can be normal? The Normal Maker, new from Be Normal. This item doesn't really work because there's no such thing as normal. We're all different. What we like, how our brains work. In fact, one in five of us live with mental illness. Don't filter who you are. Start by talking to someone you trust. And remember, there is no normal. Today, unfortunately, brings an end to the 2023 New York Fashion Week, and the city has been vibrant with celebrities and fans showing off their best outfits. Ready to walk us down the runway is our lifestyle reporter, Ryan Conyu. Ryan, thank you so much for being here. I love Honest the to shades. See you. I'm happy to be here with you. Oh, let's just get right into it. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened? What, what did Fashion Week look like in New York this year? Oh, yes. All roads led to the Big Apple this week. As a matter of fact, it was kicked off by Peter Dow's one, one time a collection. He showed it off with his 90s fashion label. As a matter of fact, it had a touch of Ocean Vong's poetry. This fashion week is to show the upcoming fashion for spring 2024 and the summer. And boy, we are in for some style. So Ryan, I have to know, who was turning heads this year? Oh my gosh, the red carpet and the runway was star-studded. Victoria's Secret, star Tori Birch, as well as Studio 189 was on there showing off their upcoming collections. We always know Anna Wintour was gonna be there, Naomi Campbell and her collection of Pretty Little Thing. They were all showing out their very best. Priyanka Chopra Jonas made a show-stopping outfit glamorous look. It was so beautiful and you had to see it. Oh my gosh, I loved it. And clearly there were so many different events, but can you tell us, are there any other shows that you want to shout out specifically? <sighs> Anastasia, Ralph Lauren made oh. his comeback to the runway. Mm -hmm. He took everyone off their feet with his star-studded event from Gabrielle Union all the way down to Jennifer Lopez, Emma Roberts, Jonathan Bailey. It's not just about who's coming down the runway, it's about who's also sitting on the sidelines, coming down the red carpet. He left everyone inspired and amazed, honoring the sophistication and the vibrancy of a woman. Mm -hmm. It was so beautiful. Thank you, Ryan, for breaking that all down for us. That sounds wonderful. And now we move from fashion to film, where a movie that was expected to fly under the radar is blowing up for all the right reasons. A high school self-defense class, and Lily is going to take it from here. 
<laughs> Thank you, Anastasia. Yes, as you said, a high school self-defense class fights in the film and theaters to help the LGBTQIA plus community be better represented. Here to tell us what's up with the new film Bottoms is our film reporter, Ali Swenson. Thank you, Lily and Anastasia. Representation of every community on screen is incredibly important as it provides awareness and helps people who are struggling with self-identity. This is why after a slew of canceled shows and movies, including the LGBTQIA community, many individuals felt discouraged and unseen. But a new film called Bottoms could be a step towards changing that. Made by the producers of Pitch Perfect and Cocaine Bear, not only was Bottoms a well-made and hilariously offbeat film, it was also an incredible representation of the LGBTQIA community, specifically for queer women in the community who have lacked appreciation in the media. I think the movie also deserves credit for their amazing use of the high school underdog stereotype, which is usually regarded as overdone. The producers mix this subgenre perfectly with other more inclusive themes, which many thought was an excellent way to include the community in a spot they had never truly been represented accurately in. Another truly amazing thing about this film is the unexpected support in the box office. After initially only being released in 10 theaters, the film had an outstanding opening weekend, even breaking the record of the highest figure for a pandemic era movie, bringing in a whopping $51,000 per venue. As of this week, Bottoms has expanded their showing into 1,200 other theaters nationwide. It also has an overall rating of 94% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is outstanding, especially considering the releases surrounding it, including the remaining showings of the Barbie movie and Oppenheimer that made their debut in late July. So what does this mean for queer women being portrayed in the media? Well, experts speculate that because of the imminent success of Bottoms that there will be more movies like this added to streaming services and hopefully theaters as well, even despite the backlash that has been expressed in areas prior to the movie's release. We here at Unpeel believe that the representation of the queer community is important and needed in order for the film industry to live up to its potential and to give everyone a place on the screen. Back to you, Lily. Thank you, Ali. Definitely agree with you there. Well, the Juice Jam lineup is finally here. Stay tuned to find out which artists will be taking the stage in Syracuse. We'll be right back. No margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to send those old STEM theories flying past the neighbor's house into outer space. Dare to program something internet breaking, record breaking. Dare to blow their minds. Dare to learn the difference between sedimentary and metamorphic rock. Go find those rocks. Dare to keep daring. Dare to STEM. Check out She Can STEM to get started. Here's to the straggly ones. The first ones. But hey, I look good with this ones. The black, brown, red, and gray ones. The itchy ones. The ones grown by dad. The ones grown for dad. The yeah, I nearly didn't do it this year ones, and the absolutely filthy ones. They all raise awareness, raise funds, start conversations, and save lives. Because whatever you grow will save a bro. Learn more at Movember.com. Welcome to my house. Everybody's pretty tired of each other. The walls were closing in. Clearly a case of too much family, too close, 24-7. If this sounds like your house, try going someplace new. YourLifeYourVoice.org. You'll find lots of ideas to help you handle the family stresses of being confined to close quarters. YourLifeYourVoice.org. It could help you find a little more breathing room. Welcome back, Unpeelers. Flo Rida is the headliner for Juice Jam 2023. University Union announced Tuesday that the Wild One singer, as well as Denzel Curry, Ryan Beatty, and Rachel Gray will all perform on September 24th, and doors will open at 1230. Curry was a member alongside former Juice Jam performer 21 Savage in their 2016 group. XL freshmen BD and Gray have both emerged this year, rocking up 100,000 plus monthly listeners on their respective albums. Tickets are priced at $25 and are only available to Syracuse and ESF students. I am so excited for Flo Rida. I think that's the performer that most Syracuse students are getting hyped up about. He's really going to know what to do with the crowd. Oh, so who absolutely. are you excited for? I'm really excited for Flo Rida too. Mm -hmm. Literally, just in the PSA, it was like, Welcome to my house. And I was like, well, yeah. blah, blah, blah. We're, like we're ready he to has go. so many hit songs <laughs> that I am just so excited to hear. And I, well, 
Okay, is that it? <sighs> Shoot, sorry guys. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have with you tonight, but stay tuned next week for more Unpeeled. Thank you for tuning in and make sure to follow us on our socials at Citrus TVE on X and at Unpeeled underscore Syracuse on Instagram. I'm Anastasia Frazier. And I'm Lily Evans. We'll see you next week at 8 p.m. Thanks for spending your Wednesday night with us. Stay classy, Syracuse.